you know, what we're doing is we're trying to assist interpreters, for, for example, say at the United Nations, you know, 10 years ago, the, the network wasn't as, as good as what it is now. We don't, you know, 4G coming into 5G now in places. So the more data you, you feed into your system to train it, the more accurate it's going to be. So what does Lingmo do today? So Lingmo, we're a SaaS translation so, uh, solutions company. So we provide solutions to enterprises to best communicate with their customers, whether it's via live chat, it's via voice to voice. We, we do the consumer market um, with our main focus being on SaaS products. Just to get an idea, you know, like how, how better is uh, this, this technology compared to what was possible before? You know, in, in, re, in relation to the cost, it's, you know, it's, it's per minute charge. Um, it depends on the solution at, at the time. Um, if it's um, text, it's generally by per character, but again, it can be it can be solution based. One thing that I kind of want to point out is, you know, you've got interpreters, you've got um, translators out there that, that go to business meetings and stuff like that. You know, what we're doing is we're trying to assist interpreters, for, for example, say at the United Nations, you know, it's quite intensive for what they do. So if we can assist them in, in, our, in providing artificial intelligence or translation solutions, that's what we're, we're, we're aiming to do. But in, in relation to what, you know, kind of what's different is, I'll use an example of myself when I was in China, when I was doing the plumbing business side of it. I had interpreters that I, I hired one in Shanghai and they come to Beijing with me and they couldn't actually understand the dialect in Beijing compared to, to Shanghai. So they, they weren't doing an effective translation. Whereas artificial intelligence, you train it to suit different dialects of Mandarin and, and other languages and, and becomes a lot more efficient. You train it in different aspects of terminology like cloud-based servers and stuff like that. Where interpreters and translators, they've got to do translation across various different industries. So for them to keep up with the industry jargon of it is a bit hard. And the message could be, especially in the enterprise side, you know, it could be million dollar deals going down, but there's confusion. What makes it possible today that, and it was not possible 10 years ago? That's a combination of things. So one's the technology, um, one's the industry knowledge of how we can train artificial intelligence to suit different dialects and, and nuances, for example. Other one is latency, you know, the network capability. You know, 10 years ago, the, the network wasn't as, as good as what it is now. We don't, you know, 4G coming into 5G now in places. You know, with the, the lower connectivity meant the translation wasn't real time or as close to real time as possible and people weren't were impatient in waiting. So it's, it's a combination of things. I think it's the it's also the data that's fed into it. So the more data you, you feed into your system to train it, the more accurate it's going to be. So you've got your data, your latency, and on all those issues is why it's, you know, and then for the next three years with 5G and stuff, it's just going to get faster and faster, um, which means our compute power is faster, which means we could do it over phone calls, over Zoom and, and, and other such things. It just It just increases what we can do with it. The artificial intelligence and the servers can cope with it. It's getting it from the user to the, the server to do the translation and back in as fast as possible time. So with that said then, uh, what do you think will happen in the next five years technologically? So what is your anticipation? You know, there's a lot of things that's gonna be possible with this technology. Again, it comes down to the network. You know, for, as I said, for example, you'd be able to pick up a phone and you'll be able to speak in your language and the other person on the other side of the world is getting in real time in their language. You know, that's that's comes down to network connectivity. Um, so it feels like, again, you're having a conversation in real time. Uh, sorry, ha having a conversation in the same language and effectively it's two different languages. The accuracy level, you know, it's, it's going to get up there a lot more than what it is now. Um, you can never say anything's going to be 100%, but it's, it's going to pick up the nuances, dialects and slang a lot faster and a lot quicker and it's going to train, as well as adding new languages. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of languages out there which are, that aren't documented or anything like that. So adding new languages is going to be a big thing as well.